Okay, today I'm going to start by talking about elimination reactions in general, and in specific, this video will focus on the E1 elimination reaction. Now, elimination reactions occur often in competition with substitution reactions when you have um, a base as the nucleophile. Okay. So here what we have is a substrate. This is an alkyl halide with uh, sort of a secondary alkyl halide where we have the alpha carbon which is directly attached to let's say a chlorine, a potential leaving group, and this alpha carbon is directly attached to a beta carbon and another beta carbon, making it secondary. Now, when we think about the elimination reactions, we form alkenes as the product. We don't substitute the leaving group, we just really remove the leaving group and replace it with a double bond. And so let's see how that's going to happen for the E1 reaction. Now, the E1 reaction is kind of similar to the SN1 reaction, and in fact, the first step of the E1 reaction is exactly the same as the first step in the SN1 reaction. Both the SN1 and the E1 have two steps, and the first step is where the leaving group just leaves, right? So in this case, the chlorine is going to leave, it's going to take this, uh, these electrons with it, and in this case it would form the negatively charged chloride anion. Now, when the leaving group leaves, just like in the SN1 reaction, it leaves behind a carbocation intermediate. This secondary carbon only has three bonds associated with it, it has a positive charge because it lost the electrons that it was previously sharing with the chloride, and therefore it's important to have a substrate that's able to tolerate, able to stabilize this carbocation in order for an SN1 or an E1 reaction to occur. Okay, now if this was an SN1 reaction, we would say the first step is formation of the carbocation. That's the rate limiting step, the hard thing to do. And then the second step would be for the incoming nucleophile to just replace the leaving group. That would be a substitution reaction. And that could happen, and it does happen in competition with elimination reactions, even with things like hydroxide. But since hydroxide is a strong base, it can do something else in order to satisfy this carbocation intermediate. And that would lead to an elimination, not a substitution. Now, what we're going to do is ask this hydroxide not to act as a nucleophile, but to act as a base, a strong base, a Bronsted base. And what bases do is to donate electrons as a Lewis base and to abstract or remove protons as a Bronsted base. Now here's where students get confused. A lot of times they say, well, I'm going to remove a proton, and I'm going to remove the proton on the alpha carbon. We've been focused on the alpha carbon for so long, it's hard to remember that for elimination reactions, really to form a productive double bond, this hydroxide is going to remove a hydrogen on one of the beta carbons. And so here we have two choices, either a hydrogen on this beta carbon or we have this beta carbon that has two hydrogens. Now it turns out that the major product from these reactions usually is a result of a removal of a proton from the more substituted beta carbon. And in this case, this beta carbon is more attractive, and, and we'll talk about why. So let's remove a proton. This hydroxide can use its lone pair of electrons to form a new bond. with one of the hydrogens, forming water, acting as a base. And then the electrons that were previously shared with that proton can pop in to form a double bond with the alpha carbon. Okay. Now, the abstraction of this proton and the formation of this double bond occur in a concerted fashion. And so we really only have two steps as part of an E1 mechanism. The first was the leaving group leaving, forming a carbocation intermediate. The second is the concurrent removal of a proton from a beta carbon and the formation of a double bond. Now, as you see, this alkene that we have formed is a more highly substituted alkene than what we would have formed if we had removed a proton from this other beta carbon. 
If we had a double bond here instead, this would be less highly substituted, and therefore the major product is typically the more highly substituted alkene. That's according to Zaitsev's rule. Um, and so if you have a choice of which hydrogen to remove because you have multiple beta carbons, typically removing hydrogen on the more highly substituted beta carbon, the one that's secondary or tertiary as opposed to primary, will generate the more highly substituted alkene and will be your major product.